Hello guys, hello guys, today we continue Space and Times number 12 and we call this the conflicts and collisions, mostly collisions. So we won't talk about differentials yet because you didn't uh, make, you didn't uh, finish your homework, right? I hope you'll do it and we'll continue. Okay, uh, right today we'll, we'll talk about how to use all these that we learned before, how to use it in some, in some uh, simple, you know, tasks like in physics like for example first is like collisions so some some bodies flying somewhere you know some bodies they have masses physical bodies have masses right and also they have some certain interesting things inside them the first the first of it is that um, uh, most of physical most of physical values are just maybe just the value or they call it scalar value scalar like mass right like mass it's a scalar just a, just a number right the weight sort of a weight but not the weight but but the mass right some other thing maybe size okay okay guys guys don't, don't. Sorry, sorry, sorry. maybe size maybe something else all the rest the rest of the physical values they have uh, uh, they have the nature nature of vectors and more complex they call tensors so vectors vectors you heard about them right remember yeah. vectors and also tensors i forgot that i think like that maybe maybe z here tensors tensors are like generalization of the idea of the vectors we won't talk about tensors uh, right now but just understand that there's something like that has a lot to do with invariance if you remember not changed when the frame of reference is changed right so the invariance concept right so scalars are not changed when your frame of reference is changed vectors are not changed tensors are not changed either so those are the main thing of them so scalars are pretty simple like the mass right but with the, with the vectors yes question does that mean tensors are the same as vectors pardon me No, no, I won't talk about tensors because they are complex. It's a whole, a whole, a whole another thing. Okay, we'll we'll talk on them later. But just, just I just mentioned it, right? Okay. It's a generalization of, of these ideas. Uh, the main concept is invariance there. So now we'll talk about vectors mostly. Like we have a vector, right? Like for example, velocity, right? Velocity, and uh, it is invariant. So it is. Uh, it does not change whatever we do around. We can jump around, run around, but the, the velocity is still there. But it can look look like different in different different frame of reference. So what's the main thing? Like if we, like for example, if we have that type of that type of frame of reference x and y, right? So we can represent this vector, any vector. It may be uh, maybe velocity, maybe force vector of force force is a vector tool and lots of others actually there are lots of lots of vectors here so we can we can think about it as a sum of two other vectors remember how the vectors are summarized right it's a triangle remember triangle yeah. rule so so we can uh, make like for example any any vectors as a, as vectors that, that have v as a sum like this vector and that vector right it is triangle this is the V is sum of two of this vector, right? Maybe some other. Maybe like that vector and that vector. Again, triangle, V is the sum of two vectors, right? But the most, so we, we, can, we have a lot of uh, this, how we can represent one vector with many other vectors. But uh, the most uh, important for us is the vectors that are parallel to the frame of reference, so axis of the frame of reference. So we, we can put one vector like this, which is parallel to the x-axis, and another vector, which is parallel to the y-axis. And here we have right angle. So this is a right triangle, right? You see? Uh -huh. So this vector is called projection on the on the x-axis, it is uh, usually, they, den they denote it like V with the index x, and this is V with the index y, two vectors. So, imagine that we change the frame of reference, right? Those, 
which change, change the refer frame of reference frame. Like for example, it is now like like maybe that x and y prime, right? So the other other frame of reference, right? Again, the most important for us are other vectors now because those are old ones, right? The projection old. We now are using this this frame. So it will be exact parallel to the to that. We call it Vx prime. And parallel to that, we call it Vy prime. Parallel to this. And the little picture is not that good, but something like this. And this is the right angle. Hmm? So we have two two other vectors. Yes, the question? Oh, can you wait a second? I'm going to draw both there. Uh, that's just, just the only thing that we have to know that when we change in frame of reference, we use different projections, right? So we can represent this vector, vector is the same. We can represent it in different ways. So just think about it and we'll work on this later. So you, you'll see how we use it, okay? So this is just something. Now, I want to <clears throat> I want you to recall two laws. Two laws, the main laws, that's called uh, conservation laws, it's conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, right? When, um, so when we have, like, for example, we have two, two balls, right? Two balls, which this ball have speed zero and this have speed something like V, right? And this ball collides with this ball. So this ball is standing this is standing here and this is just flying this way right with a speed v and all both of them have the same mass like for example what will happen what will happen first of all those things are balls right or the they're very often in physics they call them material dots so there are no size they're very small balls they don't have rotation but they're only moving but this is like a little abstract, right? In reality, we have some uh, some uh, some different different shapes and different figures right here. And uh, so, to understand how this collision uh, actually occurs, right? How how it goes, uh, we use the concept of center of mass. Center of of mass. Of mass. Have you met with this before, maybe? No? Vitya? Yeah, yeah. So you know, remember, right? So, oh, oh. Uh, so center of mass, just uh, I'll remind a little, like, for example, if, if we have two balls, right? The same mass, center of mass is right in the, in between, right? If we have here two, like, mass, mass more, so center, if, if this mass bigger than that, so the center of mass goes here, right? It, it's can, it can be calculated. So the formula, the formula, the total formula, this, you, you, you may write on this. So this vector, the vector of the center of mass is calculated this, this way. This is the total, total mass of the whole system, and this is the sum of of this, where index goes from 0 to n. So if you have many masses, different masses, with the index side, different masses, and they have radiuses, so radiuses, uh, radius vector, it means that from the reference frame, with the uh, uh, start of reference frame, right? This is m1, this is m2, this is r1 vector, this is r2. Two and the same thing. This is like M I, and this is R I. Those are those are radius vectors, so-called radius vectors, from from the zero point of of the frame of reference to the masses which are located here. So this is the formula for calculating the center of mass. You wrote it right. This is the total mass, the sum of all masses here, M, M big. This is mass of each of the material dots. This is radius vectors for those dots, and this is the sum. 
And this is how you calculate them. And, uh, See that so this is, these are vectors, so it is the sum of the vectors, not the not the scalars, vectors. Yes. So M1, the mass times the radius. Even, uh, sorry, the, the vector. So even if but let's say M1 is really really far, so it, R1 is going to be really long. We still multiply it by M1. Okay. It's not multiplied. It's not multiplied. It, it's an index. It's just a just a number. M, this is M1, this is M2, they are different masses. Right, 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 but it would be Mi times Ri, right? Yes, 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 exactly, here. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so it goes in the same direction as radius, right? M times, M, M1 times. This goes the same as R2, but M2 times. So, yeah. Yeah, here is yeah. All right. So, this is the, the formula, and uh, there are easy, easy way how to, to see it, probably you... You remember this, these things, right? If you have some, some, uh, some, you know, that that kind of shape, right? You put it like this, and you put it something here, which goes straight to the center of the Earth, right? This line, yeah. right? And you, and you just do that, line like this. Then you take another point, like here. And do it like this, and you like this, and here is the center. I do it a little in a rough, but this is the center of mass of this figure. The same thing can be done with any shape, and one of this uh, homework for you will be like do like you you know like complex shapes and try to find out this, those center of masses, right? But the no, 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 it's in your homework, just do it. it just explain how to, to do it in reality, right, in some, 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 some shapes. But uh, what, what the main thing is for the center of mass? There's a theorem, which I would no, I'm not going to prove now, but there's a theorem in theoretical mechanics which says, if you have like a very complex shape of like asteroid, right? Right? And it's flying somewhere and flying around maybe some some uh, around some planets so between other asteroids right whatever it does you may calculate the trajectory of the center of mass of this asteroid if you know where is it so it goes like as the, as all the mass is like located in this center this is why it's called center of mass so this is one movement and another movement is rotation of this asteroid again around this center of mass so there are two types of movement which can can be calculated separately one is this trajectory the trajectory is, is exactly the center of mass not the whole shape right but you can calculate the center of mass and calculate the trajectory and another story is rotation of this thing around this again around this center of mass it's a very important thing very important theorem, and that's why we use the center of mass thing. So, like separation, separation of different types of movement. Now, and uh, when you use this center of mass, it is called, by the way, center of mass frame reference, frame reference, or reference frame of the center of mass. It's very important. It simplifies lots of tasks when you calculate. So if you can calculate before, before the, before the uh, getting to solution, if you calculate the central mass, it it, may, it can make your task much easier. So you think about it each time when you do uh, the tasks that of your homework or whatever you want to calculate. So central mass is pretty pretty useful thing. Now we'll try first to solve it in a regular frame. This this collision problem. Remember, this two mass. One mass is standing at the point with the v zero and another is moving with the with the velocity v right velocity is for, for this one is zero the first thing is we, we're using two laws uh conservation of momentum or preservation of momentum and conservation of energy if if both are conserved it is called elastic collision elastic like the rubber thing right elastic elastic 
elastic and physics means, elastic collision means, that energy is conserved. Momentum is conserved all the time, but the energy is conserved only for elastic collisions. So just this to remember. So we are what looking... Happens, yes? What happens to energy if it's not elastic? The energy dissipates somewhere. It may go to the thermal energy. Like may, we will talk about this. It may go somewhere. So first, first we'll talk about elastic collision. Elastic. So one is colliding with another, right? One ball with the same masses, right? Colliding with another. So it collides and we don't know what will happen. So some situation that we have, right? Some situation we have two balls, one with the speed of V1, we don't know V1, another ball with the speed V2. We don't know not V1, not V2. We don't know them. But we know that momentum is conserved. Momentum is, if you remember, momentum is P is M, MV. And this is vector. Both. Velocity and momentum are vectors. And M is the mass, right? So if we have this MV, we can calculate momentum for the first, at the beginning of the collision, right? Here V, so it's a sum of two momentums. Momentums are vectors and you can summarize them. So it's P1, it is MV, this is P1, momentum P1, this is momentum P2, plus P2, P2 is M by this V, but this V is zero, so plus zero. This is the momentum before the collision. You understand, right? I hope. Momentum of first ball, momentum of another ball. Here is zero, here is MV. And now... Uh, quick question for you. Yes, sure. Uh, we've never talked about momentum before. We talked. Remember conservation, preserve, conservation laws? I don't remember. Katya doesn't remember and I don't remember. Guys, recall it. <laughs> okay, look, look at, okay, look at my, uh, my lectures then before. When we talk about uh, the preservation laws. Anyway, if, if, if you don't remember, momentum is just mass multiplied by the velocity vector. This is momentum. So this is momentum for the first ball. This is momentum for the second ball. That's all. Because I was standing before, right? Yeah. V was zero. So M multiplied by V equals zero, it is zero. Oh. Oh, okay, that's what I get. I get it. The total momentum of this is first momentum, second momentum. Second is zero. First is MV. That's it. So the total momentum here before the collision was MV. Okay, I get it now. Now here, the same thing. Masses are the same. Masses didn't change, right? Velocity changed, so we have m v1 plus m v2, and all are vectors. All are vectors. But if the it's called central collision, if we, we if we hit this right to the center, right, symmetrical situation, there is no any any other speed, only this speed. There's no other speeds. There may be other speed if you hit hit the second ball like this, just slightly here, right? This ball will go, go somewhere there, and this ball will go some, somewhere there. But if you have a central collision, like center to the center, the, the speeds will be in the same direction. That's what we have here. So those are vectors, but those are only in the one line, in one line, in one direction vectors. So we have this thing. Now, what we can? We can cross out, right? masses, right? Because they are the same, right? And from here we can write this thing, V2, V2 equals V minus V1. You see that? From here. This is the result of preservation of momentum. Understood? Okay, now we'll talk about another law which is used, preservation of energy. Energy, it is a scalar. It is not a vector here. 
is here e energy energy and uh, the the energy here is called kinetic energy kinetic so the energy of movement kinetic energy and it is mv squared divided by 2 this is the formula for the kinetic energy and i think you remember because i wrote this too you, you should recall okay just just watch 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 the lecture lectures are you know where so watch this lecture on preservation you will just maybe remember recall it so this is the energy and energy because it's a scalar it is you may add it too so you may you may calculate the sum of all energies and everything so for here here v is zero right for the second for the second ball so the energy of the second ball e2 will be equal zero right so it is zero and the first is v we would have so it is m v squared divided by two right so this is the sum of energy before the collision pretty simple m v squared divided plus zero similar but different still right equal we write it here and here we calculate this and we have this and this so we know we don't know v1 we don't know v2 but we can write a formula for the for the energies right so it is m v1 squared divided by 2 plus m v2 squared divided by 2 this is the result of preservation of energy energy here is the same as energy after collision yes Say again? No, no, no. We just confused why uh, why the second this, this yeah the second member is zero. Because here's v. Here v is zero for the second ball. Oh. It's two and v squared. Maybe this is energy for the first ball. This is energy for the second ball. It is zero. And those are after collision. So this is before collision. Before. This is after. So there are before event and after event, but the energy is preserved. Yes. Yeah. Oh. This is asking how come the energy before has to equal energy after. <laughs> this is the, the law preservation. This is the that's why those laws are very important. This first the first thing is preservation of momentum. Momentum is conserved, so it's the same before and after. It's the same. That's why it's equal. The same thing is for energy. This is a uh, this is the law of uh, preservation of energy. So or conservation. It's called officially conservation law. So energy is the same before and after. No matter what happens, energy never changes. No, it's it's yes. Energy never changes, but. Kinetic energy, we, we, we see we are talking about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is preserved only for elastic, remember, elastic collisions. Yeah. Remember that and you repeat it many times. Kinetic energy, we were calculating only kinetic. There are other forms of energy, like thermal energy, whatever energies, like lots and lots. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Um, if kinetic energy doesn't change, then how come it changes after? It's not changed. No, it is not changed here. It is not changed. It's the same. Should be the same. That's why we got this equation. When something slows down, you mean? <coughs> when two balls, a uh, perfectly elastic collision is when two balls bounce. Yeah. And the, kin and the, kin the kin uh, kinetic energy is reserved. That is the definition of uh, elastic energy. Yes, this is the definition, yes. Potential energy, we are not talking right now about potential. Yes, there's one of the one of the types of energies, potential energy. Like energy of the ball that you rise above, right? And it has energy, the higher, uh, the higher you. And there's another formula for this. This is, uh, we'll talk about this. But it's not, not that potential energy, it's just kinetic energy. Only this, this is kinetic. This is kinetic energy. 
and it is preserved in elastic collisions, only elastic collisions. So it's a definition back and forth. Elastic because energy is conserved, conserved because it is elastic. It's the same, just the same. To say that energy, kinetic energy conserved is the same as says that collision is elastic. It's just different words for... Okay, got it, right? Now, what we have here? We can cross out M here, M here, and here, because they are the same, right? We can cross 2, 2, and 2 here, right? What we have? We have V squared. Yes? So we cross M's here, cross 2's here. We have V squared, that we. V squared equals V1 squared from here, right? Plus V2 squared. But V2, we know that V2 is V minus V1. So we substitute it here, and we write here, V minus V1 squared. So this is the same, like substitution, right? Remember this? Wait, so, can I see that? No, is this, is this uh, what we call? <clears throat> so you got how I, how, how I went from here to here. You got it, right? So I'll just rewrite it here above. So it is V2, I, I will. But in this case, this equation is about the scale. So it's just the value of the vector. So the vector. We're calculating the speeds, the, the velocities, right? So from two laws, two laws, one conservation of momentum, another conservation of energy. We're calculating this, the velocities of the that's, balls after collision. That's the formula for kinetic energy and the square. Yeah. And we substituted, instead of V2, we wrote this, V minus V1, remember? And here I just rewrite it, I move V1 to the left. Equals V minus V1. V minus V1. Just, just square. It's, just, it's a square, right? So I just write it like here, like this. You got, you understand, right? How I got from here to here, right? So I just moved to one, you one squared here. This is doing it because you can use a trick to solve it. <coughs> oh, 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 that's what's like that. Yeah. Applying what it is. Yeah, yeah that is solving it. Now there's a, now there's a famous formula which, uh, uh, Antosha, you may, you may uh, explain v, to them. V minus V1. V, v, uh, v squared minus another V1 squared. It, it, we may write it like like this. You may you may test it at home. V plus V one this and equals of course V one like this, right? V minus V one, V minus V one, right? It's just a formula from here to here. This is the same thing. Just check it at home. This, and you see, you see here, you see here, we can cross out V minus V1, here and here. And we have, and we have V minus plus V1 equal to V minus V1. We can cross V here, and we have, as a result, v1 equals to minus v1 this is the result
Okay, now we have a result. V1 equals minus V1. Do you know what this, what's the result of this? What kind of V1 is it? No, no, V1 equals zero. Yes, from here it's only one solution. V1 equals to zero. And what is V2 now? V1 is 0. And V2 is V minus V1. Yes, V2 equals to V. So what we what we have, this is the solution, right? This we have the result. So what happens here? What happened? You see that after collision, this was moving, this was standing, right? Now V1 is 0. So it is zero. So now this is standing. And this is moving with the speed, the same speed that that was moving. So they exchange their speeds. So that's what will happen in the center of collision, center of elastic collision of two balls. Like if you, you may try it in, you know, when playing billiard. This will, this will stop movement and this will start moving with the same speed, the second. That's the result of calculations. <laughs> they swap. They swap because the preservation of uh, both two things, momentum and energy. And that's why that's what that will happen actually. You may you may test it in the billiard. You know, that's playing. Hit one standing ball with another ball. The first will will stop. The other will move with the same speed. So. Yes, exactly. Now. Now let's try, let's try do it, let's try do it in another, in another way. Now let's 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 look at the same picture from the uh, from the another frame of reference from another point of view, and this point of view is very important. I again repeat it: uh, this the center of mass, center of mass point of view, center of mass frame of reference, center of mass of two balls with m right equal male. It's right in the center, right between them, because this ball is moving and this is not right. The center still stands in the, in the middle. So what do you think is the uh, the speed of uh, of this uh, of this center? This is moving. Yeah. This, no, the center is moving closer because it's coming closer, closer, oh, closer. No, it is the half. Here is V, here is v and think about it. How far does the, the center have to travel? Yeah. To the to, to the second ball at yeah. the same time that the, that the ball, ball on the left. Has it's always in the half, remember? It's always in the middle. No, it has to travel the same distance. Sorry, less a distance in the same time. Oh, that's lower. Less distance in the same time? It's lower. How much? How, how, what is the distance there? What is it? What is it? What's the difference between the two? Well, what is the top? It's in the middle. So, uh, so half half yes. Therefore, the speed is. Uh, half of the speed. Oh. Speed of the point is v over two. Yes, right, exactly. So it's right because it stays in the middle all the time. It's moving with a half speed. Um, but now we're looking from the center, right? Center now is moving this way with the speed v equals two, right? Uh, what what's the speed from this point? What's the speed of this? What do you think? E. Yes, but now they change the, the point of reference. Yeah, now looking from this point. First of all, yes. this point, this point is coming to this yeah. co coming to this with this speed, right? Oh, yeah. It can't come in coming. What if, what if the two points are traveling at the same speed? Is it to, really? no, it, it's not <coughs> so think if 
Well, Think four dimensionally. <laughs> Yes, so because this momentum, this center of mass moving to this ball with the speed V divided by 2, the ball, the same, it's relative, it's coming to this point with the same speed V divided by 2, because they are colliding, right? They're not like coming together. The same thing for this V, because if you look at this, this is coming to this, this point with the same speed V divided by 2. Think about it a little, just it's a little, maybe a little tricky, but... From the point, from this point of view, from the point of view of center of mass, both of these balls are coming to the center of mass with the same speed, V divided by 2. So it's the same V and V, new V. It's V equal by V divided, V divided by 2. VC, VC, we can write it VC, right? V with the center. So in, from this point of view, we have two balls coming to the same, the same speed coming here and you can imagine what will happen later right they will collide and then they just uh, bounce and then go with the same speeds back right that's that's you probably know so it's easy easy to see but let's calculate it first of all momentum uh, conservation of momentum right it's the same speed we see so it is mvc plus here it's it's not we see it's they are opposite right here V and here V are opposite. So we don't have here plus, we have minus. Because this ball is still moving here, but this ball from this frame of reference, from this point of view, it's moving now here at the same speed VC, right? So that that is momentum here. Minus because V is a vector. Vector. So they are both are coming here. So my it, this. Divide, well, we have here M, V1, again, M, V2. And we need to find V1 and V2. You understand that? We cross out M. This is, actually, this is 0, VC minus VC, 0. We, we have V1, e, oh, I will V1 plus V2 equals 0. So from here, V1 is minus V2. And because they're equal, you understand it's the same speed. So V1, V1 it is. Which speed is zero? Because because they tickle the mouth. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, that's right. They're going in different directions to begin with. So tickle. So that's not equal to zero. Oh yeah, the same stuff. Oh sorry. Just tickle with the mouth. Yeah. So think think about it. I'm not I'm not want to talk longer from here, but right from there you'll see that v1 equals minus v2. So they they have opposite directions. Like here they are opposite and those are opposite, equals, so when they equals, because the energy is the same, so it is the same speed as before. So it is, and V1 is minus V2 and V2 is minus v, V2. So those are, dire those directions are different now. So they're bouncing from each other. Think about it later. Uh, but this, you see how simple, if you understand how <laughs> to think here, but as the calculations are much more simple than before. Just two or three lines, right? So you see, it's it's a very very useful, a very useful thing. Hold on, hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. What? Uh -huh. Oh, you already read. Yeah. Okay. You you may you may help them like to write this. Okay, uh, a little later. I'm not going to to talk too long on this. Just for you to understand that it's much easier. Just it's, a, it's just an example, right? Now we'll come to another task. Uh, collision with a wall, like wall collision.
wall collision. Again, elastic first, elastic. So we have some wall with a big mass, mass much bigger than the mass of the ball, right? The mass of the mass of the wall is much bigger than mass of the ball. <coughs> and let's let's find out what happens when the small ball collide with a huge and very heavy very heavy plate, right? Well Dada. Yes. Dada, the wall would go very, very slightly backwards unless it's attached to something and and and, and the ball would go same <laughs> Yes, yes, very slightly, but we should calculate it now. Yeah? You understand how it goes, but yeah. now let's calculate how uh, what what was happening with the uh, with the, our formulas. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at this. First of all, remember what I what I started from, right? From this um, uh, representing a vector as a sum of two other vectors, right? So for this vector, which is going like this, we may and we have some some frame of reference which is like natural here. And let this frame of reference be connected with the mass, with the center of mass. First of all, let's calculate the center of mass, right? So the radius so of the center of mass, it is like divided sum of the system, right? And there are two, remember this mi, ri, right? So it is. MR plus So we're using this formula for center of mass, radius vector, right, here. So those are vectors, right, so we just R, R. <laughs> those are vectors. The radius vector. Little r, it is radius vector to the mass, for the to the ball, and r big, the capital R, it is the radius vector to the center of mass of the wall. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah. Guys, you can always look to my lecture before, so you may. You may write them, you may look to my video, okay, I will upload it. Are you uploading them now? Yeah, I'm uploading, I'm uploading all the time, you, all, all, the, all the lectures are there. So I'll upload it after, after this. Okay. So, I mean, later you can check it, okay. So now we just uh, use this formula for the radius, uh, for the radius vector of the center of mass, right? And we have here, we have this. Because M is crossed out. Here with, with this with this part right so what we have here m m is much bigger m is much bigger than m so it means that this thing this thing it approaches zero because m is very big wall is big much bigger so this because m is in the how it is called nah, denomination right denominator so it is 
the whole thing m divided by m m capital it goes to zero so this the whole thing is goes to zero too and all we have approximately is r so so this r in the center of mass as a result it is almost r of this center of mass of the wall we can call it w right it's the center of mass of the wall yeah, RW, yeah. <clears throat> so you got this, right, I hope? So the center... Yeah, so the radius vector, radius vector of the of the center of mass, it's almost equal to the radius vector of the wall. What it means? It means that the speed of the wall is approaching zero. So it's almost zero. So the speed of long, the, the, the velocity of the wall is not changed because the mass is much bigger. It is changed, okay. yes, it is changed, but it's changed very slightly. Oh, so so when it is so so small, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. In, in most most of the times, it doesn't matter. So that's why we have all so approaches zero, so it's almost zero. It means it means that the frame of the reference actually, right? It says that the, the, the wall is not moving, and the moving only mass. And now we will talk about the mass, or about this mass of the, the, the ball with the mass, right? It has V, it has speed V, right? And again, we have these dimensions, X and Y. We represent this V as two, remember, two vectors, v, Vy and Vx, as a sum of two vectors, parallel to this. Vy is parallel to y axis, Vx is parallel to, uh, to x axis. So they're called the projections. Those, those vectors are called usually projections of the velocity vector now. So we have this thing, and this is the right angle. And now the power of physics and the power of all the laws of physics says that we can look at this totally independently. If you remember again, when we talk about vectors in the, in the year before, right? We call about so-called linear independence. The vectors are linear independent. So the dimensions or projection of the vector, any projection, they are linear dependent to each other. So we can, in, from physical point of view, it means that we can talk about this, uh, these movements like Vy and Vx as a separate movements. We can talk about them separately. And for them, for those separate movements, we can calculate the same, we can use the same laws that we used before. So if we talk about conservation of momentum, we can talk about conservation of momentum with the X projection separately from the Y projection. Separately. So it's very important to understand. This is called independence. And it's connected with, uh, with the definition of dimensions and everything. So dimensions are sort of linear independent of each other. And the same thing is for physical values. If we have vector v and we divided it somehow in two vectors, two projectors, which, which together give us the same vector v, we divided it using the frame of reference. Right? We divided it into two, and those things, those projections are independent of each other. And we calculate, we make calculations with them independently. It's very important, try to remember it. It's very important. So in this case, we can calculate the projection Vx separately from projection Vy. Not the whole vector V, but two different projections. And we write laws of momentum, conservation of momentum, and conservation of, uh, of uh, energy, if it's elastic collision, right? We're talking about elastic collision. Uh, so we can write them separately for this projection Vx and Vy projection. Totally separate.
Now let's try to understand what is what is going on now. First of all, let's talk about VX. VX is going parallel to the to the plate, right? Totally parallel. It doesn't even touch the plate. VX it goes like this. From this point of view, in this frame of reference, VX it doesn't have anything to do with the wall. So no collision from the point of this projection. So VX still the same. So V new the new, new speed will be like like new, right? Nx new will be Vx. It's not changed. It's not even involved in, in, in this. So Vx, we know Vx is the same after the collision. So it looks like the speed that it moves this way, this Vx, it's the speed that ball moves this way. It doesn't change after the collision <coughs> at all. Now we have only Vy. And we are looking at from frame reference of this, right? So the wall is not moving. So just Vy goes goes like this. Some some projection. It hit hit there. And remember this this third law of Newton. The same force that it gives to the wall, the same force is, uh, gives wall to the to the to the to this mass. The same force. And that's why it bounces back with the same speed. We can calculate it as a momentum, so to, like here we have, because v, uh, the velocity of the wall is zero, right? We have only, I'm sorry, I don't have space for this. So we have momentum before the collision was mvx. You see, we're using only x projection. Oh, sorry, Y, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ. Vy, the speed which goes here. So Mvy, and there's no speed for the plate because it's Vw is zero, so plus zero, right? Equals to, again, what we have at the end. Yes, yes, yes. This Vy. There is no set of speed because the wall did not change the speed. This is the speed, this is the momentum of the wall, but the speed of the wall is almost zero. So we put almost zero. It approaches to zero, but we are easing the situation, right? The wall is very big. So this is zero. And <coughs> at the end, when it bounced, right, it bounced somewhere here. So Vx is the same. Vx nu is the same as the old Vx, right? And here we have something the speed which which it bounced right so we have again m the same mass right v1 right and again plus zero because wall is zero so from here crossing out m we have v1 equals to vy but because of and that's what i wanted you to to discuss it's one of the tasks. Yes, it is V1 equals to Vy, you see, right from here. But the directions are different, and those are vectors. So just find out why, why, actually, v, v new Y, right? Why it is minus, actually, Vy. This is the result. Because it bounced, it's changed the speed. So find out, this is first of, first of the task, find out why it's there. So should we write it down then? Because right here, yes, write it. So this is the question why. This is this is correct thing, and here we got they're equal, looks like. From the conservation of momentum. What, what happened actually? We didn't write it down correctly, that's what happened. <laughs> okay, just you, you think about it, yeah. Let's have it because of the because of the frame of reference actually because we're using frame of reference of the uh, of the wall plus plus the ball and this is a little a little tricky so it it, it, it helps in other ways but it uh, it comes tricky when, when we talk about the signatures 
Okay, so let's uh, finish with this, and now I'll I'll have a talk, short talk about inelastic collisions. If energy conserved, uh, if momentum energy conserved, uh, sorry, kinetic energy conserved, it is elastic. Like rubber. Just think about the rubber balls. They, they bounce very, very good way. So inelastic collisions, right? <coughs> inelastic means energy. Kinetic energy not conserved. Kinetic no, energy no, no. not conserved. The difference is kinetic energy and there is a law of separation of all energy. When kinetic energy is not conserved, it just turns into another form of energy. Like heat. It's not potential energy. Sure. Okay, guys, we don't have much time. So the first, uh, we talk about inelastic. It's called inelastic collision. So kinetic energy is not conserved. Momentum is still conserved. Kinetic, uh, the, this is not. So <clears throat> what do we have here? Let's talk about first, first uh, case of inelastic collision. It's called absolute friction. Friction, you don't understand what is it, right? So friction, if friction is very big, you cannot move anything if you try to slide it, right? On the surface, if the ball is on the surface, it cannot move along the surface. This is absolute friction. But it can bounce from the, surf, from the surface, but just cannot move this way, right? Or that way. So there is no way to move here or here. Vx on the surface always equals zero. You may say this like totally equal zero, three. So, so let's do, let's look at this from this perspective. V is a speed, V, right? Velocity. It can be as represented as two, ma two, two, two movements, right? Vy again and Vx, right? Two vectors, two projections, right? Vx is parallel to the wall. Vx is okay. It's moving, moving, moving. But when the when it hits the wall, Vx becomes totally zero because of the absolute friction. It cannot move at all here. So Vx is stopped in this point. And where and where goes this energy of Vx movement? What do you think? When the friction, when you move something, where goes the energy? Heat. Yes, heat. So heat increases. So the energy of Vx movement is transformed into energy of, of the heat. Temperature increases of the wall and of the ball. But Vx equals zero. What happens with Vy? Vy doesn't have anything with friction. It goes this and that, like it's perpendicular to, uh, to the wall. It doesn't affect any friction, doesn't involve any friction. So it just bounces back. So what will happen with this wall? It will go here. Vx will be zero, but it will be bounced with the speed again. Vy equals Vy. So it pam, and goes up there. Perfectly vertical, yeah. With the speed the same as this, but opposite direction. So this is this is absolute friction. Which it is. No, that's just 
Now another case, not absolute friction, but absolute, absolute sticky. Yeah, more or, or stickness, right? Absolute stickness. So we have this sticky wall, a sticky wall, extremely sticky wall. And again, the same thing. V, Vx, Vy, right? Here is right angle. And it hits somewhere here and sticks to the wall. There's no friction, so it can move here, no problem, right? And because of preservation of Vx, the speed here it will be Vx. So V equals Vx, V nu x equals Vx. So it starts moving along the wall. What happens with the Vy? It comes here down and stick here. Somehow, somehow it hold it, right? Hold the wall somehow, like as a magnet or whatever. But the, the wall is very, uh, very slippery, right? So there's, there's no friction, very slippery. So it let's go to, goes back, stuck here and moves here with the speed the same as Vx. And where goes the energy of Vy? Again, the energy of Vy, which is mv squared, mvy squared equals, right, goes to the, to the temperature. Actually, you can even use this, this increase. And by the way, you can calculate this this temperature if you use this this Bolt, Boltzmann constant. But we will talk about this later. And this is absolute stickiness. So now you understand what what is happening, like in this uh, cases of inelastic collision, absolute stickiness or whatever. When you're talking about uh, hitting hitting not the wall but some balls, you know there's. A little more complicated thing but you can still calculate it using momentum and uh, uh, energy conservation laws okay questions guys no 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 <laughs> okay well, then then i have questions okay wait, 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 don't erase it. okay ah erase no i'm not erasing almost done sorry no problem <laughs> <clears throat> okay, can it can do it now? Can it raise? Okay, now tasks, right? The first, you read it, right? Yeah. Okay, first, make a few freaky looking cardboard figures, like something, right? And find their center of masses. So each of them, each of you, right? Including your, including Antosha, create some figure from the card uh, cardboard something like okay. a little, little, little heavier than the just paper right try to do and find out where their central mass is and look what they do you know you can put put you know that you calculate the color yeah. correctly you know when you put it on this some needle right and see how it balances should should balance so this is the first question the second calculate absolute inelastic absolute inelastic so inelastic means that uh, nope. energy no, energy does not yeah. conserve at all. Uh, and then, so what are we using to calculate it with? Yes, yes, yes. The, with the two balls, y one with the speed of v, right, moving this way, and another is standing here is v equals zero. So the absolute inelastic means that they boom and they co they collide and then they go together. They they are totally sticky. Yeah, yeah, play the so right. Play the balls, they smash it to each other, mm -hmm. they stick. That's a perfectly inelastic collision. Yeah. 
So they stick to each other. Uh, the energy or, or part of it, I don't know, you, you should calculate it, right? Uh, calculate V and the energy. So like momentum and energy of this after this, after this collision. Got it? Well, the energy is the same. Are you asking for kinetic energy? It is an elastic, yes. Kinetic, kinetic, kinetic. Now, and the third question is. Oh, I should be, I should be dedicated to the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It was a joke. Yeah, that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, okay. Sorry. No problem. We have the ball with a big mass. Let's be M, maybe. Like M. Or M, M1. M1. Find out the kinetic energy because the actual energy is the same. Energy doesn't change. So I guess an interesting point, the question was how much energy you turn into heat. That would be an interesting question. Too. So this is M2, M3, M4, M. You can find out how much water you turn into heat. Because some of the heat turns into heat. Okay, ready guys? Oh, that's exactly what you want to say because then you create a fire. Yeah. That's the deal. Okay. You see the system of the balls. Many, many, many balls. There are many balls all together. Standing like close to each other laying or you know flying in the space right close to each other and this is totally central collision so it goes through the center of each ball right and there's one one rule that the mass the mass like of the ball like for example this ball m4 right is much less than the difference between them between the masses so M, M3, so each of them are smaller than the previous one, but smaller just a little. So the mass of the ball is much bigger than the difference of the masses between the balls. You got it, right? So oh, I see. this is totally elastic, totally elastic. No energy, no energy disappear. All the energy conserved, right? So this elastic collision, this one. This was, was totally inelastic. This is totally elastic. So, like this, right? So it is elastic. And uh, each, each of them is smaller, 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 and goes to the very small one somewhere. That's your, you, it's up to your imagination how small is the last one, right? And try to calculate or at least approximate the speed of the last. The speed of the last and the energy of the last ball here. You got the idea? So how, big, how large is I? I know, but it's up to you. I don't know. You may go, it's up to the, maybe to infinity. But you can make it go as fast as the speed of light. Uh, the <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Just calculate it, okay? And if you can calculate, that's good. Okay, so we're not talking about theory of relativity here, just classic mechanics. Classic mechanics is not yet. Relativity theory, right? Try to try to try to figure out. Yes, but you got the idea, right? Yeah, yeah. So the 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 clue the clue is that the mass is much much bigger than the difference between yeah, yeah. together, right? The smaller 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 smaller. Bam! You hit this, and what will happen with the last? Okay. Any questions, guys? Okay. <laughs> Bye, Dina. Love you. Okay. Love you. Love you, kids. Bye.